The Rich Man and Lazarus, Lucas, chapter 16, 19 to 31. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Elazar, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Sheol he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and sees Abraham afar off, and Elazar in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Elazar, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, Remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and likewise Elazar evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hands to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moshe and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moshe and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. The Fate of the Righteous and the Wicked, 2nd Esdras, 2nd Ezra, chapter 7, 78 to 101. Now, concerning death, the teaching is, when the decisive decree has gone forth from El Elyon, that a man shall die, as the Ruach leaves the body to return again to him who gave it, first of all, it adores the glory of El Elyon. And if it is one of those who have shown scorn and have not guarded the way of El Elyon, and who have despised his Torah, and who have hated those who fear Elohim, such Ruachot shall not enter into habitations, but shall immediately wander about in torments, ever grieving and sad in seven ways. The first way, because they have scorned the Torah of El Elyon. The second way, because they cannot now make a good repentance that they may live. The third way, they shall see the reward laid up for those who have trusted the covenants of El Elyon. The fourth way, they shall consider the torment laid up for themselves in the last days. The fifth way, they shall see how the habitations of the others are guarded by angels in profound quiet. The sixth way, they shall see how some of them will pass over into torments. The seventh way, which is worse than all the ways that have been mentioned, 
because they shall utterly waste away in confusion and be consumed with shame and shall wither with fear at seeing the glory of El Elyon, before whom they sinned while they were alive, and before whom they are to be judged in the last times. Now this is the order of those who have guarded the ways of El Elyon, when they shall be separated from their mortal body. During the time that they lived in it, they laboriously served El Elyon, and withstood danger every hour, that they might guard the Torah of the Torah giver perfectly. Therefore, this is the teaching concerning them. First of all, they shall see with great joy the glory of him who receives them, for they shall have rest in seven orders. The first order, because they have striven with great effort to overcome the evil thought which was formed with them, that it might not lead them astray from life into death. The second order, because they see the perplexity in which the souls of the wicked wander and the punishment that awaits them. The third order, they see the witness which he who formed them bears concerning them, that while they were alive they guarded the Torah, which was given them in trust. The fourth order, they understand the rest which they now enjoy, being gathered into their chambers and guarded by angels in profound quiet, and the glory which awaits them in the last days. The fifth order, they rejoice that they have now escaped what is corruptible and shall inherit what is to come. And besides, they see the straits and toil from which they have been delivered, and the spacious liberty which they are to receive and enjoy in immortality. The sixth order, when it is shown to them how their face is to shine like the sun, and how they are to be made like the light of the stars, being incorruptible from then on. The seventh order, which is greater than all that have been mentioned, because they shall rejoice with boldness and shall be glad without fear, for they hasten to behold the face of him whom they served in life and from whom they are to receive their reward when glorified. This is the order of the souls of the righteous, as Hansford is announced, and the aforesaid are the ways of torment, which those who would not give heed shall suffer hereafter. I answered and said, Will time therefore be given to the souls, after they have been separated from the bodies, to see what you have described to me? He said to me, They shall have freedom for seven days, so that during these seven days they may see the things of which you have been told and afterwards they shall be gathered in their habitations. The Vision of Sheol, Chanok, Enoch, Chapter 21, 1-2, and Chapter 22, 1-10. to Then I made a circuit to a place in which nothing was completed. And there I beheld neither the tremendous workmanship of an exalted heaven, nor of an established earth, but the desolate spot prepared and terrific. From there I proceeded to another spot, where I saw on the west a great and lofty mountain, a strong rock, and four delightful places. Internally it was deep, capacious, and very smooth, as smooth as if it had been rolled over, 
It was both deep and dark to behold. Then Raphael, one of the holy angels who were with me, answered and said, These are the delightful places where the Ruachot, the souls of the dead, will be collected. For them were they formed, and here will be collected all souls of the sons of men. These places in which they dwell shall they occupy until the day of judgment and until their appointed period. Their appointed period will be long, even until the great judgment. And I saw the Ruachot of the sons of men who were dead, and their voices reached to heaven while they were accusing. Then I inquired of Raphael, an angel who was with me, and said, Whose Ruach is dead, the voice of which reaches to heaven and accuses? He answered, saying, This is the Ruach of Havel, who was slain by Cain, his brother, and who will accuse that brother until his seed be destroyed from the face of the earth, until his seed perish from the seed of mankind. At that time, therefore, I inquired respecting him and respecting the general judgment, saying, Why is one separated from another? He answered, Three separations have been made between the Ruachot of the dead, and thus have the Ruachot of the righteous been separated, namely, by a chasm, by water, and by light above it. An extract out of Josephus' discourse to the Greeks concerning Hades, wherein are contained the souls of the righteous and the unrighteous. And this is the discourse concerning demons. Now as to Hades, wherein the souls of the righteous and unrighteous are detained, it is necessary to speak of it. Hades is a place in the world not regularly finished, a subterraneous region wherein the light of this world does not shine. From which circumstance that in this region the light does not shine, it cannot be, but there must be in it perpetual darkness. This region is allotted as a place of custody for souls, in which angels are appointed as guardians to them, who distribute to them temporary punishments agreeable to everyone's behavior and manners. In this region there is a certain place set apart as a lake of unquenchable fire, whereinto we suppose no one hath hitherto been cast, but it is prepared for a day afore determined by God, in which one righteous sentence shall deservedly be passed upon all men when the unjust and those that have been disobedient to God and have given honor to such idols as have been the vain operations of the hands of man as to God himself shall be adjudged to this everlasting punishment as having been the causes of defilement, while the just shall obtain an incorruptible and never fading kingdom. These are now indeed confined in Hades, but not in the same place wherein the unjust are confined. For there is one descent into this region, at whose gate, we believe, there stands an archangel with an host, which gate, when those pass through that, are conducted down by the angels appointed over souls. They do not go the same way, but the just are guided to the right hand, and are led with hymns sung by the angels appointed over that place, 
unto a region of light, in which the just have dwelt from the beginning of the world, not constrained by necessity, but ever enjoying the prospect of the good things they see, and rejoicing in the expectation of those new enjoyments, which will be peculiar to every one of them, and esteeming those things beyond what we have here, with whom there is no place of toil, no burning heat, no piercing cold, nor are any briars there, but the countenance of the fathers and of the just which they see always smiles upon them, while they wait for that rest and eternal new life in heaven, which is to succeed this region. This place we call the bosom of Abraham. But as to the unjust, they are dragged by force to the left hand by the angels allotted for punishment, no longer going with a good will, but as prisoners driven by violence, to whom are sent the angels appointed over them to reproach them and threaten them with their terrible looks and to thrust them still downward. Now those angels that are set over these souls drag them into the neighborhood of hell itself, who, when they are hard by it, continually hear the noise of it and do not stand clear of the hot vapor itself. But when they have a near view of this spectacle as of a terrible and exceeding great prospect of fire, they are struck with a fearful expectation of a future judgment and an effect punished thereby. And not only so, but where they see the place of choir of the fathers and of the just, even hereby, they are punished. For a chaos deep and large is fixed between them, and so much that a just man that hath compassion upon them cannot be admitted, nor can one that is unjust, if he were bold enough to attempt it, pass over it. This is the discourse concerning Hades, wherein the souls of all men are confined, until a proper season, which God has determined, when he will make a resurrection of all men from the dead, not procuring a transmigration of souls from one body to another, but raising again those very bodies, which you Greeks seem to be dissolved. Do not believe the resurrection, but learn not to disbelieve it, for while you believe that the soul is created and yet is made immortal by God, according to the doctrine of Plato, and this in time, be not incredulous, but believe that God is able when he has raised to life that body which was made as a compound of the same elements to make it immortal. For it must never be said of God that he is able to do some things and unable to do others. We have therefore believed that the body will be raised again, for although it be dissolved, it is not perished, for the earth receives its remains and preserves them, and while they are like a seed and are mixed among the more fruitful soil, they flourish. And what is sown is indeed sown bare grain, but at the mighty sound of God, the Creator, it will sprout up and be raised in a closed and glorious condition, though not before it has been dissolved and mixed with the earth, so that we have not rashly believed the resurrection of the body. For although it be dissolved for a time on account of the original transgression, it exists still and is cast into the earth as into a potter's furnace in order to be formed again not in order to rise again such as it was before, but in a state of purity, and so as never to be destroyed any more. And to everybody shall its own soul be restored. And when it has closed itself with that body, it will not be subject to misery. But being itself pure, it will continue with its pure body and rejoice with it, with which it having walked righteously now in this world 
and never having had it as a snare, and will receive it again with great gladness. But as for the unjust, they will receive their bodies not changed, not freed from diseases or distempers, nor made glorious, but with the same diseases wherein they died, and such as they were in their unbelief, the same shall they be when they shall be faithfully judged. For all men, the just, as well as the unjust, shall be brought before God the Word. For to him has the Father committed all judgment, and he, in order to fulfill the will of his Father, shall come as judge, whom we call Christ. For Minos and Radamantus are not the judges, as you Greeks do suppose, but he whom God and the Father has glorified, concerning whom we have elsewhere given a more particular account, for the sake of those who seek after truth. This person, exercising the righteous judgment of the Father towards all men, has prepared a just sentence for everyone, according to his works. At whose judgment seat, when all men and angels and demons shall stand, they will send forth one voice and say, Just is thy judgment. The rejoinder to which will bring a just sentence upon both parties, by giving justly to those that have done well an everlasting fruition, but allotting to the lovers of wicked works eternal punishment. To these belong the unquenchable fire, and that without end, and a certain fiery worm never dying and not destroying the body, but continuing its eruption out of the body was never ceasing grief. Neither will sleep give ease to these men, nor will the night afford them comfort. Death will not free them from their punishment, nor will the interceding prayers of the kindred profit them. For the just are no longer seen by them, nor are they thought worthy of remembrance. But the just shall remember only their righteous actions, whereby they have attained the heavenly kingdom, in which there is no sleep, no sorrow, no corruption, no care, no night, no day measured by time, no sun driven in his course along the circle of heaven by necessity, and measuring out the bonds and conversions of the seasons for the better illumination of the life of man, no moon decreasing and increasing, or introducing a variety of seasons, no will she then moisten the earth, no burning sun, no bear turning around the pole, no orient to rise, no wandering of innumerable stars. The earth will not then be difficult to be passed over, nor will it be hard to find out the court of paradise, nor will there be any fearful roaring of the sea, forbidding the passengers to walk on it. Even that will be made easily passable to the just, though it will not be void of moisture. Heaven will not then be uninhabitable by man, and it will not be impossible to discover the way of ascending thither. The earth will not be uncultivated, nor require too much labor of man, but will bring forth its fruits of its own accord, and will be well adorned with them. There will be no more generations of wild beasts, nor will the substance of the rest of the animals shoot out any more, for it will not produce man, but the number of the righteous will continue and never fail, together with righteous angels and spirits of God, and with his word, as a choir of righteous men and women that never grow old, and continue in an uncorruptible state, singing hymns to God, who has advanced them to that happiness, by the means of a regular institution of life, with whom the whole creation also will lift up a perpetual hymn from corruption to incorruption, as glorified by a splendid and pure spirit it will not then be restrained by a bond of necessity, but with a lively freedom shall offer up a voluntary hymn. 
and shall praise him that made them, together with the angels and spirits and man, now freed from all bondage. And now, if you Gentiles will be persuaded by these motives, and leave your vain imaginations about your pedigrees and gaining of riches and philosophy, and will not spend your time about subtilities of words, and thereby lead your minds into error. And if you will apply your ears to the hearing of the inspired prophets, the interpreters both of God and of his word, and will believe in God, you shall both be partakers of these things, and obtain the good things that are to come. You shall see the ascent unto the immense heaven plainly, and that kingdom which is there, for what God has now concealed in silence, will be then made manifest, what neither eye has seen, nor ear hath heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. In whatsoever ways I shall find you, and them shall I judge you entirely, so cries the end of all things. And he, who hath at first lived a virtuous life, but towards the latter end falls into vice, these labors by him before endured shall be altogether vain and unprofitable, even as in a play brought to an ill catastrophe. Whosoever shall have lived wickedly and luxuriously may repent. However, there will be need of much time to conquer an evil habit, and even after repentance, his whole life must be guarded with great care and diligence. After the manner of a body, which after it hath been a long time afflicted with a distemper, requires a stricter diet and method of living. For though it may be possible, perhaps to break off the chain of our irregular affections at once, yet our amendment cannot be secured without the grace of God, the prayers of good men, the help of the brethren, and our own sincere repentance and constant care. It is a good thing not to sin at all. It is also good, having sinned, to repent, as it is best to have health always. But it is a good thing to recover from a distemper. To God be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.